This guy, how crazy he is. I was, I was given a eulogy for the lady who used to be the manager of the band I played. And I'm given a eulogy up there. And I look out in the church. You see him? And they're fucking rough like this with his arm around my daughter. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> That's awesome. With a big smile on his face. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. I got to go that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Gentlemen, the holidays came early because Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand, has launched new products, all new ultra premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give yourself the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. I guarantee your hygiene routine will never be the same. This is what I like about Manscaped is anybody would be happy just treating your webbles, you know, to a nice close shave, but to do hair and body wash and conditioner, they're stepping it up. So go to manscaped.com slash OMG high for 20% off and free shipping. Make sure you're feeling and smelling prepared for a little action under the mistletoe. <laughs> because I know my wevels, I always check my uh, wevels at the end of the day. And since I've been using Manscaped, uh, I'm going to say I'm a little upset that I don't have as much to smell as I used to. <laughs> Okay, ever pull into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize you forgot the one key ingredient for your dinner? Mm. Now, you have options. Get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees for the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code OMGHI. Download the DoorDash app and enter code OMGHI for this special deal. Right after, you know, when you were filming and shit got fucked up, I hadn't been tested or whatever. I was supposed to go yeah, with. yeah. Well, I didn't go with you. I took off that day, and it worked out. It worked out great because I got a, a good partner of mine. We worked radio car back in the seventies together, and I was radio telling, car. Yeah, he, he's the guy's crazier than a shit house mouse. Got a great <laughs> sense of humor. Yeah, and why do the one? About three months ago, he got diagnosed with. Uh, the fuck, the stage four lung cancer, and and a couple of spots hit his ah. kidneys. So I told the wife, I said, hey, I got this week off. George ain't doing it. I'm not going with George. See you later. I took off to go visit him and have a suit. How's he doing? He's he's doing all right. He's got a great outlook on life. He, he sits there and he tells me, what's his outlook? Because I Grant wants to know. Yeah, he he, he he sits there and he tells me. At first off, he's going to the VA and he asked me for advice. He says, hey, you know, I can go to the city hall. I said, fuck it. He lives in Havasu. So he's going to the VA out in, uh, in Phoenix, and I said, Ralph, City of Hope has every fucking thing. You got a brother that lives right here. I said, at least consult with him. Wow. So that's what that's what he did. He got all his testing done through the VA. Then they wired everything to City of Hope. He came down here for a consultation. They told him. I said, how'd it go? He says, good, good. They said. VA's doing everything that they'd be doing. He says they concur. They're not going to operate on any of it. They think Maybe they can I'll shrink it with medication. Grab that mic. They think they can uh, shrink the tumors with medication, give you three to seven years, three to ten years uh, of life. Which one does he want? He says, I'll take six. <laughs> What's his answer? He says, I just told him. He said, fuck it, I'll take six. You see, I knew to ask. <laughs> that, was, that was good. And, and then he said, to show you a sense of humor, he says, hey, this was just <laughs> last month. I was going through this heart procedure. Look at my heart. He says, Gil. He says, I know you keep playing it down. He says, but I know what it is, and I know, you know, that it's dangerous. You know, one wrong move, and they could fuck you up. And I said, yeah, but I, I don't look at it like that. He says, well, just in, in case, preparation. He says, if, if you go south... Is it going to upset you if I'm sitting at your services next to your wife? He says, I just want to sit next to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can sit next to her. Just don't invite your fucking third grade girlfriend. <laughs> no, shit. This guy, how crazy he is. I was, I was given a eulogy for the lady who used to be the manager of the band I played. And I'm giving a eulogy up there. 
and I look out in the church. You see him? And there's fucking Ralph like this with his armor on my daughter. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's awesome. With a big smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, he's he's nuts. And it was, uh, I went down to see him. And, How come some dudes have personalities like that and some guys don't? What do you think that is? I, I, I have no is, idea. Is it where you come from? Is it is it in your blood? Is, are guys meant to be quiet and some dudes, you know, are quiet. Some guys are funny all the time. Some guys, you know, are hard to make friends with, you know, like if you say, oh, this guy, man, he's cold when you meet him. And then when you get to know him, he's really a good guy. But they're consistent. What What is that in somebody's I, I, I don't their know. psyche and their family psyche? I don't, I don't know because I'm different than uh, my sisters and, you know, uh, in my family. My, my dad was very funny. He was a humorous guy. Yeah. And uh, Ralph uh, just... The environment that people hang around with, you know, <laughs> Ralph's good. Yeah, I, he, he's just I mean, it's different doing it for a living. But yeah, he, he's yeah. the life of the party, you know. He sits there and nothing was sacred. Not even his mom. He, he'd make fun of his mom, you know. Yeah, uh, but nothing serious. All very light spirited. No, no. I mean, you know, sometimes people get mad if you make a joke in a, in a tough situation. Totally. You know, they think it's like, what did they say? What? How did you say that? Uh, it's nothing is sacred, yeah. but ultimately, I think that you know you got to uh, enjoy enjoy yourself. What you know, some people are very sensitive. You know, like like when I was going to get my surgery, you know, and Ann was already having surgery, and then you know the lady came in with me, and she said, uh, you know, I I think it's you know it's quite a gift, you know, what your wife is doing doing for you. And I said, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, you should see where she lives. <laughs> that lady didn't think that was funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to look for the... I, I don't look for the negative side of anything. Everything is... My glass is half full versus half empty. And that's the way Ralph is. You know, it, we're, all going, we're all going somewhere. You want to go shy or you want to go fucking loud? You want to go quietly or you want to go where people say, Who? The guy, man. The guy... Okay, Remember when we met? Yes. Remember the guy that was sitting with us that didn't really say anything? Fuck, I don't. <laughs> well, that guy. Yeah. I mean, what, what, how do you want them to describe you? Yeah. You know, you know, on on Instagram, I used to look at Instagram all the time. And the one thing about the iPhone is it tells you how much of your life you're fucking wasting <laughs> looking at your phone and how much time oh, you're wasting yeah. looking at Instagram. In the last two or three months, hardly anything at all, at all. And I and I feel more connected to, um, I wouldn't say I do more shit during the day, but I feel more connected to just not wasting my time looking at my phone hmm. all the time when I'm by myself. So I think for me, you know, it's helped me, you know, just kind of be okay with just fucking not always being on the phone, man. I used to jump into the phone and the iPad uh, just as a place that was safe to me. Because that's when my mother-in-law was there. Yeah. And, sure. you know. Well, yeah. So it was, just, it was my safe zone. Yeah. Go in there mm -hmm. and didn't pay attention to anything. And, right. And it was it. Uh, now, shit, I, I, don't, I don't use it as much uh, as I used there's, to. There's, yeah. You, you know, you go over there and see your friends and stuff. And you go to the BF, you know. And, and uh, there's something to that, man, to, to doing shit that, you know, uh, um, requires interaction. Because, you know, we're the type of person that would go to the room and be in there. Mm -hmm. And just be in there on this or doing something like, you know, I would say that, that, you know, in the beginning, things used to bother me more. Like this, we're almost like, you know, I was coming to the end of this year, but not once have I came over here and said, man, I don't want to fucking go over there. Which is one of the reasons why when people ask me if you did a podcast, would you do a podcast, this and that? And I would always be like, yeah, but I grow disinterested with stuff. But, but this thing... Uh, is something that I have not once said. I might today. I got fucking lost. I'm from here. I don't know how the fuck I got lost. But how come people? You know, in 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 my day in school, there's a high school over here. This thing. Somebody had like maybe a girl had one thing on her body that you know if somebody wasn't attractive that they had big that or like a, a a fat ass. Everybody, I don't know how everybody got has ass now. Like, you know, <laughs> going through the airports, like you would see a, a girl probably had a fat ass like one out of ten, and now 
fucking nine out of ten. I, I man, what are, yeah. genetically? What is it? What the fuck? Where all these fucking culo come from? I don't and, know. They, and they think it's. I'm they, just grateful. They, they, they think it's beautiful. Listen, my aunts had fat asses. I didn't think I used to run in front of them, so I didn't have to walk behind them. I didn't think any of <laughs> any of a fat ass is uh, is and attractive. Know, and 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 I, I just love people. I I do. I keep tabs with some of my wife's friends that were she was best friend. I called them up. Hey, just checking on you. What are you doing? You know, how's it going? And she don't it, get mad at that. <laughs> no, no, no. Can I this is next to you at the funeral. <laughs> no, she called her and shit. I remember she called her and uh when I was in New Mexico lecturing, she called me and I said, Okay, what's going on? Pearl already told me. And there were problems in River City between Pearl and myself. She says, All I'm telling you and she was divorced. And she just saying, I don't know anything about what the problems are, you know, and I have nothing about, I know what she's accusing you of. She said, but I just told her, you know what? You've got a good man. And he says, you've never worked. You've never paid for anything. You don't know what it's like to go home, go out and go to work for eight hours, come back and then have to cook for the family and do the laundry and do this and do that. Says, he's a good guy. You know, you, you better rethink everything that you're doing. And she says, and you, Gil, I don't know whether you did or whether you didn't, and it's none of my business. She says, but if you did, you better not ever say you did because it'll never, nothing will ever happen good out of it. And so I keep in touch with her, and she, she loves my wife, and, and she's just a friend. They went to high school together, and she was good. She was, we probably stay in touch because my compadre's family and her are very close. Yeah. So I, that's how I still... Uh, reach out and her dad her dad loved us and he was in the army and he was a World War II veteran and so everything's gone good I, it doesn't bother me she's good and, and my wife on the other hand it's tough to be to have an, long time an, friends she's an introvert my mm -hmm. wife is an introvert you know she doesn't uh, socialize you know she doesn't reach out to many people everything is all close family, mm -hmm. you know, and so there's more. And she's always been like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, they say you can't change horses in midstream. And a lot of times, you know, some people do change behavior, um, but it's really hard, man. And it doesn't seem like it would be that hard. If somebody would say, just get up one time and go look outside one day. If somebody, my grandma hated to go outside. I was like, just get up and go outside. Ah, if, it's right there. Just open the door and fucking go outside. My wife initially was hesitant, was a little reluctant. Simple invitation to a breast cancer fundraiser. Right. Right. And she's uh, you know, she really didn't right. because she's an introvert, doesn't want to go out and mingle with anybody. Sounds she has like a lot of people in lack of self confidence mm -hmm. in her. And I said, Dear the <laughs> invitation has been extended. I'd like to go. Yeah. And she says, okay, okay, we'll go. And so on the way up there, I'm sitting there saying, dear, who'd ever thought that you and I, two Mexicans from Pico, would be in a car on the way to the Beverly Hills Hotel to be sitting at a table of the guest of George Lopez? And then she starts, she says, oh, yeah. And then she started getting a little nervous. And we got there. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. But yet... She had a beautiful time. We had a good time. time. We had a good time that night, huh? Yeah, we did. She had a beautiful time. She's happy. Talks about it. Just yeah. so excited. And she's never gotten as close to anybody, you know, and as close as can be. She really loves you. You know, George is so nice. And hey, say hi to George. Yeah, good. You know, and, and so. It was fun. It was good to see you guys. And, and uh, are you guys going to take that trip? Yeah, we, we, you need to give me some kind of paperwork. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, give me Clarice. the give me the paperwork. We got to fill it out and send it in. And all right, yes, we're gonna... Clarice. Yeah, I got him a trip to uh, to Mexico. Yeah. To oh Cabo. yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Do, uh, do you know when, or is it whenever you want? No, to? No, you got to fill in. Like I, I, I bought one that night for the Dodgers. I got to send in paperwork, oh, and yeah. then they'll give me. They'll send me the dates that are available. And uh, and for Constance too, I got Constance a trip too, huh? Did you? you guys? Yeah. yeah. And the last thing was. Uh, we were just talking yesterday because I'm trying to plan our 50th wedding anniversary was last year, mm. but it was during the COVID thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, the year prior we had already figured out. I know this will shock you. 
I was going to have something at Stephen's Steakhouse, a big uh, blown out 50th what? wedding anniversary. What? At uh, Stephen's, I'm talking to Jimmy. Jimmy says, oh, yeah, we'll blow this one out. This isn't going to be a regular. This is going to be the best, Gil. And so it's all set and done, and then COVID hit, so it's all canceled. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to her the other day, and, I, and I'm telling her, hey, dear, you know, it's the 51st is coming up. We didn't do anything last year, although it was the best anniversary we've ever had together, right. what my kids did. And so this one, you know, make up. Do you, you have any idea what you want to do? And, and so we discussed it a little bit. And then this morning, I just reminded her, I said, hey, dear, you know, you got all these, we made these plans. Uh, she, like George, doesn't want to go to Stevens this year. You know, <laughs> she's, you know, th- th- She's always going to Stevens. I said, well, if we went to Stevens, we'd invite a bunch of people. Well, she's not like me. She goes there all the time, and she's like, I don't want to fucking go here anymore. <laughs> I've never gone there, yeah. but I know about it. But, but you see that, ching out, man. We're going to have the, the same fundraiser here as I had, you know, when when uh, when I fell and they had a welcome back party at the same place. <laughs> yeah. You can't have all the parties at the same place. So, but I could have it there, <laughs> and I could have it nice. I could invite a bunch of people. I could do a lot of stuff. So she says, no, what about the Mission Inn in Riverside? Oh. Now, that's beautiful. Haunted. Beautiful. Oh. And it, they and have uh, Christmas decorations yeah. up oh, yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, beautiful. They have a nice restaurant. And I said, okay, well. One time I had a behind the parking lot. <laughs> there you go. By, and ballet. <laughs> The guy came over, I thought you could see the, the, head, the head of the microphone right there by the line. Hey, hey, don't worry about it, eh? Good memories of the Right there, the girl that was worked for the Major League Baseball. Hey, it wasn't during the winter because it gets cold. Uh, uh, no, it was during the I – only, I, only, I only take out my fierro during the season. So, But it's a beautiful place. Yeah, it was. So I said, okay, Fun if memories. that's what you want to do, we'll go there. But we have to cut the numbers down, you know – over there because it's not that big, you know what you got to do. Oh yeah, yeah. And so then this morning I told her I said, "Hey, we can't do shit for our anniversary. Our anniversary is the day after Christmas. Oh, we can't do shit this year for anniversary because we just got confirmation on the twenty first of December. That's when they've scheduled my daughter to give her kidney to my oh, niece. Yeah, damn. Oh, so wow. we for I said we're not going to be able to go out and party or you have to be taking care of her." You know whatever she needs, and even if she doesn't need a bunch of care, I mean we can't go out and have a good time with her laid up. You know it's, she's part of this whole cha cha. So she just right away went into mommy mode and says, "That's right, no." And I'm gonna have to be baking food. I'm gonna well, have to listen, I had a this. kidney transplant and I was upstairs. The fucking world went on without me fucking around. So you might be able to slide out for a little while and come back. Oh, I, I know I can. I already told her. I said, so see, you're going to be taking care of your daughter. You'll be cooking, doing all that shit. I'll go out by myself, have a good time. I'll party for both of us. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's good. So you're 51 years? 51. Or two years. The day after Christmas. 51 years. Is there a secret to 50? Uh, 75 dog years. <laughs> I mean, even more than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> 230 uh, earthworm years. <laughs> Is there a secret to a long-lasting marriage? Yeah, yes, pearl, <laughs> pearl. Oh, I think yeah. it's the other. Per- I think it's the person. Yeah, but you yeah. know, when 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 trust or respect or you say decency or, or or even knowing when to be funny and when not to be funny. Like, you know, it, it, you get to a point where you can be a little bit disrespectful on a regular basis, but you don't realize it's disrespectful to somebody mm-hmm. because it's been so long. But there has to remain like a like a watermark. You can't go below the, be below to a certain point, you know. And, and especially in, in, in public, public or person. Oh, yeah. Where you might say something and go, oh, that was kind of mean. And I know he says that all the time. That That's never, like, in a, in a relationship, that that never go. That never works. She was disappointed. She, one year we were on a cruise, and we were with a bunch of friends. We're on this seven day cruise, and you know they have the night you dress up to go to dinner. It's a tuxedo or a suit, whatever you want to. So I'd been on a ship all day, and they were giving away these souvenir glasses with every drink. They were nice glasses. I said, I want to take a bunch of these home to my kids. You know, I'm thinking of my kids. And the more I drank, I need more glasses. I need more. So then I'm thoroughly vavoso. Yeah. <laughs> I go up to my room, and my wife's getting ready for dinner, and she says, hey, Gil, why don't you just stay in the room? We'll go to dinner, and you, <laughs> you, and, I will go out, you and I will go out later and yeah. have some dinner. I said, all right. 
you guys, she said, I said, but I really want to go. She said, no, 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 please. Just stay here. <laughs> she put you I in said, the drunk tank. I said, okay, all right, I get it. I understand. I remember I was wearing white shorts, and I had a red T-shirt that said, instead of Coca-Cola, it said, come caca, <laughs> which looked just like Coca-Cola. I remember those shirts. So I walked into the dining room. She went to eat. You get one of those at AHA, so I'm the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I walk into the dining room. Everybody's there, <laughs> all dressed up to the tents. I walk in, and my comadre, I hear her telling my wife, He's bad. Oh, <laughs> I bet a fucking Captain Kangaroo in his white shorts. <laughs> out with his fucking campana swinging left and right. <laughs> and so I was back was right. And uh, that was it. She got up. She walked out, walked up to me, and she says, come on. And she put her arm into my arm. Oh. And I just said, I know. This was wrong. And she says, yes, let's go. I said, okay, I'm sorry. This was wrong. This was wrong. And she took me back to the room. And I went wow. back. No fight, no nothing. I thought it was funny, but evidently she didn't think what it was What room of people was that? What's that? Did you know all those people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We were in a large group. They thought it was funny. <laughs> it's just my wife didn't think it was yeah. funny. And were there, were there repercussions like the next no. day or afterwards? No, or not, she at not at all. Not at all. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing you guys she, got going. She let it go. She's a little bit disgusted, but <laughs> you know, and, and, and you saying that, like, I can remember how many times I didn't. Well, I can't remember every time, but I, I, most of the time, I didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, I still remember when when somebody used to almost make me go. I I fucking didn't want to go, man. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, hey, I don't want to go, and I'll tell you, I don't want to go. Don't make me go. And then they make you go. So there's a balance in things of like, okay, you don't have to go to this. Don't worry about it. You know, I'd, I'd like you to go to this, but you don't have to go to that. But there has to be, I think, a balance in a relationship of, of saying yeah. like, you know, that's cool. Don't worry about it. But I need, I'll let you not go to this one, but I'm going to need you for this one because this one's more yeah. important than that one. It, I talked her into, I, I didn't talk to her. I, I asked her the documentary. Which I thought she did an excellent job. Yes, you know, she did. And, that, and, that, and now that you say that, it's not something she would have been com comfortable with. Is sitting in front of a of a, a camera and talking just her giving the information. No, she wasn't, and and she didn't want to do it. And I said, "Dear, I can't make you do it. I'm asking you to do it because I think there's so much. It's important for well, you to put that out there for other wives. Yes, to see what they're going through. I said it's going to be." Beneficial. Not only will it make the documentary better, but it'll it'll help people and let them see what. I think it's it really humanized like. you too. And and so she agreed to do it. She was scared to death. We got up there. She's nervous. I said, Tiller is good. He's just going to sit you down and they'll start talking to you. Yeah. And it'll come out. And I'll be. I was in the room right next to her. I was monitoring everything. And uh, she held back. She fought back the emotional side. She fought back tears. Yep. Uh, she laughed a little with the three goals that I had. Mm -hmm. The one was to dump her, she yep. says. And that one didn't work or whatever she <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she was really good. And then we, Well, it showed a side of, of you that was not about the, t the detective side. Sure. Your father, her, uh, your friends, you know, uh, um, Pumpkin, you know, what was the lady's name? Uh, pumpkin. P pumpkin. Pauline. There you go. Uh, that that it it um, it, it showed a, a a side story to your life that that humanized you and and made it not just about the search for some you know notorious guy, but also uh, the people affected by something like that. Yeah, I think that's why that's why those things are. Are are um, you know Ben Baller? I saw Ben Baller today. He wants to come on the podcast, but he said how excited he was to to sit with you at the tournament and, and talk to you because he remembers at that time and he was like, man, I can't remember that. That was my man right there. Like I love that guy. And uh, I said, that's you know that's that of it. I just saw him now, Ben uh, Hernandez. That is Ben. You said Ben Ben Baller, the, oh, the ben Chinito Baller. dude that we play golf with. At oh, the tournament. okay, no. Not him. I, I saw Ben Hernandez. Ben, ben, ben Bray. Hernandez, ben Bray. Yeah. I just saw him. For the, I've seen the movie, and, and I'm not ashamed to tell you, I've seen the movie at least a half a dozen times, and it makes me tear up every time. Uh, McFarland. 
It's a movie about oh, yeah, the, yeah. the Mexicans that were running for uh, yeah. cross country. I was supposed to be in that movie. And I was he was to play in the it. guy the storm. He oh, was oh yeah that that uh, and the lady you, hey fucking, you'd have been good the owner so you'd have been giving slim jibs out that, <laughs> that, that hey here, here you smell this you'll fucking run <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I met the lady first and then she didn't put me in there I uh-huh. her name with Nikki somebody or somebody but I I didn't get yeah. that she, I met her first and then I, she replaced me with somebody he was a tough dad he that. was a tough dad in the movie and I'm watching last night with my son and my wife and I said hey that's Ben Hernandez that's Ben Bray. And I said, look it up, because it was a quick... What part did he have? To... He was the father of one of the, oh. the, the fastest run on the who, team. Who then. took my part? Uh, of the some, guy in the store? Some some Chino, I don't know, not a Chino, a Mexican guy, older guy, I don't know his name. I've seen him before in other stuff, but... What did that guy from, what did Valente from my show play? The guy he was just one of the, he was oh, one of the dads. dads. Yeah. He was one of the dads. It's funny that that lady, yeah, all right, well, you know. Is it a good movie? Yeah, well, it makes it didn't me cry. do well. It, if you weren't a Latino, it wouldn't do well. Well, that's the problem with our movies. Nobody wants to see them. So if you're not yeah. Latino, Th- these are a group of guys that were from the Piscas, you know, that this white coach went over there and started training them, and yeah. got them to run, and got them to do this. And they ended up being the state champs first time ever. And they won it several times after that. And there was an opportunity for him. To leave the school to go to a rich school yeah. with more equipment, more money, more everything, safer community, and he turned it all down to stay right there with the guys from uh, McFarland. In real life or in the movies? In real life. Por pendejo. Was it, was it no, no. going to be called Por Pendejo? Por Pendejo. <laughs> they got that uh, thing on uh, Instagram, song going out. You see guys working in some, the song, da, 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 pendejo, da, 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 oh, pendejo. Oh. You see the crab that's eating corn while it's being, while it's being cooked in the pot? <laughs> oh, no. my God, I saw that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> the bullfuckers, the, the crab's in the pot getting cooked, and there's a, some corn in there by him, and he's picking the corn and eating them while he's fucking being boiled. No. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> that was uh, I saw that going around Fuck, yesterday. He's... he's, he's Talk about crabs in the barrel. That he's fucking eating corn as he's going out. It's a man. You ever see the one where the where the the crab was in the pot and of hot water? They put him in there and he jumped out and turned the stove off. No, can you Get see that the one? Fuck what? out of Look here! Look it up. <laughs> no, okay. He motherfucker no. was like, he jumps out. With this fucking Klaus crawls over, turns the fucking stove off. <laughs> it looks like the guy's like, you can't, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> turned it off. All right, what else do we have? Oh, oh, oh holy shit, I Look found it. Yeah, yeah, one sec. You talked to that dude, AK-47, that brother? Yeah, I hit him up today. Look at that one. Or no, that one. Look. There's a thing. He turned the stove off. <laughs> he turned the stove off. I'll grab that link. I'll include it in the show notes. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um... That's hilarious. What do you think? What happened like, in Kyle Rittenhouse's uh, case? You know, I, I, I tried to explain to the wife... That all we ever see here, all anybody ever sees, is what the news wants to put out. And you don't know if they're putting out everything or something less. And you don't know. I'm, I'm so extremely happy that he didn't kill two black people, African Americans, because then there would have been rioting right away because the white guy got off for after killing the blacks. I got an email, and I, and not an email, I, uh, yeah, it was. A buddy of mine sent me this thing, and it says, wow, I didn't know this, and MSNBC never put it out. And it's a list of things about that particular case, like the kid, the gas station where all this shit started at, belonged to his grandparents. And he was protecting his grandparents before he got jumped and started getting chased. He was 17 years old, and it was perfectly legal in their state for him to possess a weapon. He got, he started getting his ass kicked and he's down on the ground. They hit him in the head with this uh, skateboard and they were kicking him when he's, a, when he, well, the he was, defense theory. He didn't get hit in this fucking skate with, with a skateboard for handing out free hugs. He's no. walking down the middle of the street with two weapons and well, I think people what, are afraid around him, right? You can see people around him kind of like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I'd be afraid if I saw anybody. I don't care if it was a cop or not. I'd be afraid of anybody walking around with a gun. But if we don't know the entire story and we don't know 
exactly what the jury heard. And his defense attorney said, had he not taken a stand, they probably would have lost the case because the prosecution is putting forth a good... Day before, day before they rested the prosecution, which tells me w- what are they really doing, who's running the show, they dropped one of the charges against him because they didn't know they charge him with minor possession of a gun. The prosecutors didn't even know that that's not a violation of law where they're at. So he was perfectly oh, yeah. legal in possession of okay, the gun. Okay, so yeah, so that's why they dropped that. That that's why they dropped that one charge. So we only know what the news is giving us. Those jurors, I had to tell my wife. My wife made fun of him. The for crying on the stand. For crying on the stand. Look at these dry crap. What a good actor. You know, he's trying to do the man, how phony, you know, yada. But yet they said when they interviewed some of the jurors, it was his testimony that won him over. So I don't know how real it was. We only know what the news media is feeding us. I know what it's like as an investigator that works homicides and officer involved shootings. So I know how difficult it is. You know, to get a prosecution successfully convict, getting a suspect successfully convicted, unless you got all the right answers. But they threw the best they had in front of the jury, and the jury said, there's not enough. And it wasn't because he was white. I'm glad the suspect in this case wasn't black. Because if they'd have convicted him, they're only convicting him because he's black and the white guys got killed. That's why they're going after him. Well, and, and I just don't know enough, so I can't say. He shouldn't have been convicted. He should have been convicted. I know I was listening to uh, uh, a man that I really thoroughly enjoyed his company. What is that? He was playing. And uh, <laughs> am I on the thing, motherfucker? Hey, what? What, you, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing my podcast. What's Look that? There's my cop right there. Okay. The cop. Hey, what's up, DL? The cop I was just the about kid. to drop your name. <laughs> I was just about to drop your name. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Y'all sound great. That motherfucker, hey, that motherfucking beard got white as fuck. Huh? <laughs> uh-huh. Where where you at? I'm in New York, man. I hey, you. has your dog bit anybody today? <laughs> hey, I want DL to know. DL, I want you to know from me, I tell everybody how good you were to me out on a golf course. It's a day that I'll never forget, primarily because of you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, but he also says that you said you didn't like cops. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I laugh at that. He didn't like most cops. Matter of fact, I hate most motherfucking cops. And I, I, re- I remember that, and that was true. And, hey, all it did was make me laugh. I don't give a shit about the other ones you did. You don't hate me. I think we found the slogan for recruiting officers. I don't hate all fucking cops. Join now. <laughs> you good? Are you are you staying out there for the holidays? Your grandkids are uh, growing fast, though. No, I know. Yeah, unless, grandkid. Unless, uh, and congratulations on the thing. I said it on, on the uh, thing. Congratulations on you and mine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to put your ass to work, too. I'm going to put your ass to work there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, man. I love you, brother. Okay, I love you. Happy safe, Thanksgiving. Man. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanks for driving by. All right. I said, how find <laughs> so, Do you actually accidentally call him? Is that no, what I think they were trying to do... Uh, one, of my, one of the guys in that circle is having an issue with someone who may have been using funds that weren't necessarily all his so one of the guys was looking for some guidance there and I think he tried to FaceTime the whole group and then I, I tried to turn it <laughs> off it was DL oh, uh, yeah. oh, hilarious. have dry skin ashy skin well you're in luck Manscaped new products includes the ultra premium body wash This 16-ounce aluminum bottle with a pump top is infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, fresh, and moisturized. Add their new 2.1 shampoo and conditioner to your Manscaped arsenal. The 2-in-1 shampoo conditioner have 
key ingredients with benefits that include sea kelp extract, coconut water, saw palmetto, take care of your hairs, fellas. Don't forget about your flagship about their flagship product, the Lawnmower 4.0. The electric trimmer has proprietary advanced skin safe technology, so this trimmer reduces cuts on your nuts. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. That's a big deal. You know, I think that uh, ladies appreciate somebody that takes care down there. That was the name of my first show that I never sold. <laughs> Take care down there. Get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash O-M-G-H-I. That's 20% off with free shipping. That turns out to be quite a bit of money. At manscaped.com slash O-M-G-H-I. Clean up your candy cane this year <laughs> with Manscaped. Imagine if you could blow yourself. You'd want to make sure down there. Hey, a dog, that, Dan. Why can't you? Why? That's what I always say. What do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store. Or you want something exciting and new, but it would be great to stay in tonight. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. They're expanding their, their role here. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code OMGHI. That's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and zero delivery fees for your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter OMGHI. Don't forget that's code OMGHI for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change. Terms apply. Which means, te- depends how your fucking attitude is when you call. <laughs> if you have respect, they'll give it to you. But if you're like, hey, you don't say please, those are the terms apply. That's what I think. So I was about to say DL. And, yeah. and, and I started to say that perception is reality to the perceiver. And DL was very vocal yeah. about... Hey, this guy shouldn't have got off. He, he was is, yeah, yeah. So there is nothing that is going to change DL's mind, nor would I ever try to. And I, I had a case where it was in uh, the city of Paramount. Railroad tracks, some transient, jumped the, jumped the back fence, came in the house, armed with a knife, the Mexican family on the inside. He had his wife, two kids. He's there. He could hear noise at the back door. He goes to the kitchen, goes to open the back door, and here's this transient now coming at him with a knife. Fortunately, when he heard all the noise, he grabbed a gun because he's by the railroad tracks. He oh, yeah. And the guy comes at him with a knife, and bam, 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 he shoots him, and the guy's dead. And he falls right outside the door. I mean, you can see where he was shot inside. He was able to get out. And he fell outside the door, dead. So now we're trying to identify this guy. We identify him while we're still there. I end up getting a call from the father who's calling from, like, uh, I, I want to say he was calling from Georgia. Yeah. And he was an African-American, black man. He's calling me up, and he wants to know what happened to his son. And I said, His son was a transient? Yes. And I said, sir, I, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I'll I explain it as easy as I can, but it appears that your son, and I didn't say anything negative about him. I said, it appears that your son, middle of the night, is trying to come into some man's house, and shots were fired, and your son who did not live there, who was trying to break into the man's house and was appeared to be armed with a knife, was shot, and unfortunately, he met his untimely demise. And he says, yeah, yeah, but I know how you cops are out there. You just shoot everybody. It's out on the news. We all know about it. And I said, well, sir, no law enforcement were involved in this. This was the homeowner. He says, yeah. He says, Mexican, just like you. And you're all sticking together, aren't you? I know how it is out there. I said, sir, I, I really, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, it doesn't appear that we're going to do anything. You know, we're going to change your mind over the phone right now. Uh, if you'll give us a few days, I'll be more than happy to meet with you in person. If you want to come out here, I will talk to you on the phone at length, whatever you'd like, sir. I don't need to talk to you no more. And then he hung up. Now, that man was convinced that 
cops shoot anybody they want to and get away with it out here. And number two, because the family was Mexican and I was Mexican, I was going to cover up and make everything good. That was his perception of things, and nothing I would say or do is going to change his mind, even though he didn't know all the facts of the case. Because whatever we did to investigate it, whatever we documented, was not going to be believable in his mind anyway. Because cops were no good and Mexicans stuck together. Anybody that has a belief one way or the other on any of these cases without being without having firsthand knowledge of the investigation, it's really tough. But it's, those are okay, the, the, I, we understand that. Those are like I would say on the line. Okay. You know, those are kind of you know those are kind of in that thing where somebody's not there. What about when that cop was driving, chasing somebody, and shot through his own windshield at somebody that was running from him. Like shot from the inside of his car through his windshield at somebody that was running. Like, you ever seen a cop shoot through his own fucking that's windshield? Yeah, I, I saw it. I, I've seen it before. And, and it's, you know, what you have to understand is bullets go through glass, and if somebody's pointing a gun at me and not, the window's rolled up, I'm shooting right through the glass. You but know, that guy was running. There, there, I, there, I, 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 I get that part yeah. of it. Uh, I've seen just on the internet. You know, I want to say it was Las Vegas or yeah. I'm, look, I'm looking. I mean, there's it a up thousand. There. Yeah. One in Vegas. I mean, there's That's a yeah. thousand of. I mean, there's a thousand yeah, of them, where the know. guy was shooting through the window. Yeah. and they got him. Uh, I don't know. You know, every instance, every one of those things is are based on their own merits. And every police department has yeah. different. And the most police department, you know, in days of old, when I was first out there, you know, you could shoot at a fleeing felon. The law said you could shoot at a fleeing felon. Mm-hmm. Departmental policy said don't shoot at a fleeing felon. <laughs> you know, unless you can articulate. Uh, I remember at the Pomona Fair, the Pomona cops shot a guy as he was running, and they shot him in the back. But he had a gun in his hand, and he had shot, and so now they're worried if we don't get him, somebody gonna, else is going to okay, get hurt. Right. Mm-hmm. So in that instance, you know, every case runs on its own merits. And if you're of the mind that, hey, they're just going to lie, well, nothing you're going to say or do is going to change that opinion one way or another. Well, you know, there's so many, I mean, with the Internet and with the news the way it is and the 24-hour cycle, mm-hmm. every, every shooting from every place and social media – you're going to see a, a a speck of the reality of the and make your judgment yeah. on a 58 second clip sure. of that. And 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 I'm not here to profess that all cops are, no, are clean because mm-hmm. I've had uh, I've had a cop where unfortunately that for him, a cop pulled on you, uh, pulled a gun on you. Yeah, fortunately oh, yeah. here locally, uh, nobody got hurt. Where you know the cop shot him, he was running, and but then he made up a story. You know, after, and I had to tell his chief police, because we were investigating it for a local city, and I had to tell his chief, hey, you know, your, your boy's lying. It doesn't fit with the evidence. You know, nothing's there. He's documented what his story is. And I remember at that time, they had their first black officer. And he's telling me, he's giving me a story. And this guy's sweating BBs. And I said, son, we're going to stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in my car. We're going to take you out to the scene. And... You're going to look at it because what you're telling me is going to get you in an awful lot of trouble. And he said, sir, you don't understand. I'm the first black officer in the history of this department, and I'm scared to death. I said, son, you don't do this right. I'm going to advise you your constitutional rights. Right. So let's go out there and take a look. You take a look again because what you're saying you thought you saw isn't real. It's impossible. So we went out there, we came back, we sat down, he said, okay. And he gave me the story. And I had physical evidence to back up what was saying. That fortunately for that cop, for that, yeah, the cop, because he was a shooter, shooting at the fleeing suspect, you know, nobody else got hurt. Man, I mean. Other than other than the suspect, he got a bullet in the hand when he was going over a fence. But the hand, I don't. <laughs> so that cop. Ended up quitting. They sat on a six. They sat on it for six months. They didn't file on him, but he lost his job, lost everything else, lost his income, and he was just bad news. And we got a. Uh, I remember wanting to fire. He did get fired. Uh, a cop. 
and he was a uh, white cop, and he shot and killed the Mexican national on New Year's Eve. And the first thing they did was they instructed everybody going out on New Year's Eve, stay out of the one ways. Is that my let's turn this? The fuck's yeah. going on with this? I turned mine off. You got a chorus yeah. line in here today. Mm. A chorus turn, line I, on. I turned my phone off, but let's get this thing off here. Is that a computer or is that an iPad? It's an iPad. Yeah, it's, it's an iPad with one of those like hard shell keyboards, right? Mm. Is it? Is that like the Apple one that it comes with? Uh, no, it's interesting it's a, question. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. It's, uh, <laughs> How tiny is Gil's palo? <laughs> Need to know you. information. What have you trying to let it answer before you turn it off? <laughs> no, I don't want them to know how big my palo is. Because it's small. They'll say palito. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy went out there. They, they instructed the cops that night, don't go down to the Klingermans. It was in South Almani. Because everybody knows it's a bunch of apartments in there. New Year's Eve, there's going to be a bunch of Mexicans, and they're going to be shooting in the air. Not shooting at each other. Yeah. But they're going to be shooting. Stay off the streets. Don't go back there. Well, he was a one-man unit, and he went down there. Man. Knowing that they're going to do this. He heard the shots. He went through the apartments. He saw some Mexicans drinking in the carport area. And he comes around. He says, all right, everybody freeze. Oh, the guy shit. with the gun. First thing he does is, hey, who's this? And he Turns goes like, around? To, yeah, and bam, bam, bam. He's got a gun in his hand. So you can't justify, you, it, how do you get a filing on that deputy? Guy, had, guy was armed. There had been shots fired. He turns around. So now how do you prosecute him? You can't because he felt his, uh, his but, life but, was in danger. Yeah, but he... he he was told not to go to a place he that he told. knew that was going to probably be. He got fired. Yeah, that, and that oh, was yeah. it. He, he did get because you know what you know that's going to be happening. Yeah, like you know when we did a thing in Los Angeles for, I think Kobe did it too, where it was about shooting in the air at New Year's on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Like those bullets come down. They sure do. Yeah, and people get. I've had a I've had a murder like that. Well, we called it a murder, but that's and, what it was. And they really. can go through roofs of houses and stuff, right? It just been, I don't know. It went through this guy's head real quick. Yeah. And, you know, it just shot up in the air. They're all having a party in the backyard. And it, it was up. Then, psh. When these dudes start shooting, I think New Year's Eve, they, they were shooting. Man, there was a lot of shit going on last year at night where people were shooting these weapons. Like, you're just like, man, I, I'd, go inside, I'd go inside. Back in the 70s, they used yeah. to tell us to get off the streets yeah. on New Year's Eve. Just go inside for five, ten minutes. You know, just get off the streets. It's not worth it. You know, everybody thinks that because, I guess, of, of shows and TV shows or you know, um, superhero movies that, you know, you can, you know, you think you could withstand somebody looking at you or holding a gun to you. It's way fucking different in real life. Oh, it when, is. When somebody, when somebody pulls a gun in a store and says, all right, nobody fucking move, you know, and, and everybody's like, hey, you're not going to shoot me. You know, it, it, the, 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 those games, I think, like those those games that kids play have done a lot to desensitize kids, but also I think it's given kids a, a, a false sense of, like, you think you know what it's like to shoot somebody or be shot at or had a gun pulled on you. It's nothing like it is on video games, right? They, they haven't been through, you know, they need a reality check because when we were growing up, somebody yelled at you, you know, you were, you were concerned, you were frightened, you did, you listened. And now you tell somebody, hey, get your hands up. Nah, fuck you, what are you going to do, shoot me? You know, and there's nothing more fearful to a cop when you got a gun on somebody, which is deadly, and those guys don't want to do what you're telling them, and they give you what is called passive resistance. Oh, come on, you know, come on, this is ridiculous, and they continue to move forward at you. You know, so now you either have to continue to move back and retreat, or just get ready for something. You know, yeah, um, you know. You know, I, I don't know the level of training. I think every police officer has a different level of training. But when I was looking at YouTube stuff about police, you know, I was, I think when we first met, fascinated on people that were impersonating police officers. Mm -hmm. You know, but but also how difficult it is for a police officer to, to roll into a place and then take a look at the surroundings and figure out who's good and who's bad. Now, they separate people. So there is a, they get a call. I think, I, I don't know what, what city it's in. And there's a guy back there, he has hands in his pockets. The cop comes around the corner and goes, hey man, take your hands out of your pockets. 
you know, let's talk. And the guy's talking like pretty level. He's not out of his mind. And he's like, no, no, I'm just here. You know, I'm doing this thing. And the cop, he pulls a gun out of his, out of his pocket. He had it in his hand, and he kills that cop. And that cop was really kind of trying to be nice to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey man, let me see your hands. Come over here. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just doing over here. And the cop didn't pull his weapon. And that guy, when that guy pulled on him, it's too late. He shot him for yeah. It's, it's too just late. too late. It's a, it's a tough decision. I'm, I'm glad. And that's during the and that was during the day. And he followed the guy. And the guy was walking. I mean, it's it's a trip, man. You know, and people, you know, don't watch their dogs, and you know. People have their fucking dogs on, uh, they have pit bulls or aggressive dogs, and the police show up, and you're talking to one person, the fucking dog gets loose, the cop turns around, and they shoot the dog. Yeah, they do. And people are like, hey, man, you shot my dog. But it's like, that fucking dog, if he, if you go like this, and that pit bull grabs you by your fucking ha- arm, he's you're, he's going to lock on you, gonna he's going to tear damage. your fucking arm, we're going to kill you. In San Francisco, when I was there, there was a dog that got loose that mauled a woman who was just walking. People don't have their dogs on on leashes, which is incredibly fucking dangerous. And everybody thinks that their fucking dogs are, you know, the best fucking dog in the world. And they would mm-hmm. never do this. He never acts like that. I don't give a shit about any of that stuff. I'm laughing. Fu- you kick your fucking dog, your shoe flies off. That dog grabs your fucking ankle. The the woman who owns the dog is like going, Pepper, leave him alone. That fucking dog's mauling you to death. I have a daughter. You have kids. You you know you your mom, your grandma, whoever you're out with. Man, it's it's dangerous shit. And people think to think that they're fucking dogs. Like DL has that big ass fucking Akita. He travels with. It's fine for him, but. I'm scared of a dog getting out of the fucking yard and you're right there and he's running at you and the last thing you hear is somebody say, don't worry, he doesn't bite and yeah. this motherfucker's running right at you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I'm not going to take just, your word I'm for it. I'm just laughing because there's a great scene in a Pink Panther movie where Peter Sellers, there's a dog on the sidewalk yeah, no, and some guy's walking by and he says, does your dog bite? Peter Sellers looks and says, no, my dog doesn't bite. And the dog comes and latches onto his leg. He says, you said it didn't bite. He says, that's not my dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good, but we're talking about in fucking real life. Right? You know, people have all that shit, right? People have all that. Are they, What's the liability there? If a lady comes out in fucking nightgown, the dog runs between her legs and fucking bites you across the street, putting your kid in the car seat. Lucky dog. Between that lady's legs. and. <laughs> You know, it, 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 it's easy. Rule of thumb. Your dog, it bites your problem. And I don't care if it's on a leash or not on a leash. It's more more of a problem if it's off leash. But even if it's on a leash, your dog bites, it's your your fault. You don't have total control. That's what the law says. You have to have control of your dog. So, I don't know. What, what, if yeah. fucking dog's running at you, what do you do, man? If it fucking bites you, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, it's not much you can man. do. <laughs> Shit. Not much you can do. Put up a fight. They just had a pursuit. I, I laughed. And I'm not making fun of any police agency. But they don't were, use dogs as much anymore because they got guns. Fuck there, you there, was, now. there was a police pursuit day before yesterday. It lasted about three hours. And I'm watching this thing, and the guy's racing all over town. They block him in. He gets away. They, he was going the wrong way on the 5 freeway. Oh, got off. They blocked him in again. And all this was going broad daylight. I mean, it was like 3 in the afternoon. And I'm watching this shit. And they finally get him all blocked in with cars. And Mexican dude. And he finally decides, and he's not, he's being belligerent about everything. So he finally decides, okay, I'm going to get out of the car. But he's not doing the hands in the air. And go, what are you going to fucking do? And bam, I mean, from here to the TV, they're shooting him with uh, non-lethal weapons and a couple of stun <laughs> bags. And he ain't, he, he, he ain't flinching. And then so here comes Fluffy. And they send Fluffy in there to bite his ass. And the dog starts grabbing his arm and trying to grab his leg. And he's fighting with the dog. The pichita perro turns and runs away. Oh and so the God. guy gets back in his car and <laughs> takes off again. You know, it, it was it was unusual. So Fluffies don't even, uh, they're not afraid of Fluffies either. And, and, and I've had guys tell me where Fluffy has bitten them. And they said, man, I'd rather be shot than have that dog bite me again. Oh, yeah, you don't yeah, want no to kidding. Dog. Scared. Oh, my God. It's... it's I don't know, man. It's a, it's a strange thing because, you know, people have all these dogs. They might live in places that, you know, aren't where people have them in their yard or whatever, man. It, it's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous to, for, to, for kids walking home from school or whatever. You wouldn't want to lose your kid because somebody, you know, forgot that their dog was in the front yard when they were, you know, went inside to use a restroom or, you know, went to go get their phone for, for one minute. Yeah. It's dangerous shit. 
It's dangerous. Bad stuff. Oh, yeah. My dad got his hand mangled once. Uh, it was a family dog, like a, a distant family member, but he was going like, hey, puppy. Like, had never had a problem before. Bit into his hand. Like, he almost lost a finger. It's just yeah. nothing you can do. You don't can't expect it. All right, what do we have today? What are we doing? Uh, we, we got a bunch of voicemails. Oh, oh but the other thing you, you hit me about beforehand, Astroworld, if you wanted to talk at all about that. Um, so, the, okay, so the Kyle Rittenhouse, so... Now you see him on videos like saying innocent as fuck t-shirts and all of a sudden he's like the fucking poster boy for being a white guy getting off for killing two people. That's all the people around him. You know, that, that's... That, yeah. What should he be doing? He should fucking stay out of he the... He should stay out of the, out of the limelight. Mm. He should stay out of the press, but everybody's putting him up. It's not him that's doing it. You know, everybody should just leave the boy alone. If I were him... What about his reaction to the verdict? Did he, did he think he was going to be... I mean, I've never seen a kid faint before. Yeah, he thought he was going to be found. He was just so excited, I guess. I don't know. He, Part but of he, a kid he, faint. He, he went down uh, like a sack of shit. What about when he hugged his lawyer and he said, we did it? What, what is that? You're like, we're, 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 I'm off? I got yeah. off, right? Yeah, we did yeah. it. We kept me out of jail. I mean, that's what, I don't know, that's what they did with OJ. Did it. That motherfucker did it. Oh yeah, alleged. I guess. Yeah, I mean, wrote, I'll, get, I'll get sued. He wrote alleged. a book like that, everything. He didn't. I would allege the same thing. I was so disappointed in the verdict. I couldn't even. I couldn't turn on any TV for two weeks. That was pretty heartbreaking, man. That Kyle. You know when you when you're they make the defendant reach into a fucking bag and pull his own fucking lottery balls to pick out what kind of jury you're gonna have. The fuck is that? And that judge, I think, was not. The judge was they, the the case never should have been heard in guy. L.A. It should have been held in Santa Monica, where no, no, the where, judge of Kyle Rittenhouse, where the right. judge, oh, that fucking judge was a, allegedly, uh, yeah. yeah. From what I saw, it seemed a little he's nutty. fucking awful, man, mm -hmm. fucking awful. And he was, it, it appears that he was down on the prosecution side. You know, he was chewing the he chewed the prosecutor out, chewed him out in the court one day, and. Uh, he was for the defendant. He was for on the defendant side. It appears it appears that yeah that way. Yeah. Which, but I've never seen a fucking a guy def, a defendant pull look into a pull his own fucking jury numbers. Like, what's that? The fuck is that? I, I have no that. idea. I I have no idea. You see that shit? No, no, no. no that's they're, their they're, jury they're, they're picking a jury and they're going. He's putting his fucking hand into a, a thing and pulling out numbers of jurors. The fuck is what kind of shit is that? Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea how they pick a jury pool here. Well, I don't think they they do it by they do it by computer by, by power ball. The Dodgers don't even pick fucking season ticket holders like that. <laughs> Put your fucking hand in there and pull out a, a fucking number of a juror. Crazy. Let's see. Let's see what that guy decides to do with uh, with himself now. Yeah. Because uh, he's wearing an innocent as fuck T-shirt, uh, taking pictures with uh, with white guys in a bar. So it wouldn't let's surprise see how that goes. if somebody gets drunk and whacks him. That wouldn't. You know, th I mean, yeah. these guys are just. They get bitter, they're different, and they walk to the beat of a different drum. They may you whack know, him. You could see, well, this is a podcast, I shouldn't say anything. You, you could see somebody beating the fuck out of that guy. Yeah, it looks like he'd be easy to steal his lunch money from. <laughs> Not me, because I get I get lost coming over here. I come over every fucking week. I gotta, I gotta find my way over there in Kenosha. You keep circling the block. <laughs> it's, that's, it's pretty sad, man. It is. It's pretty fucking sad. And then Astro World, you know... With that, with that concert that they had, mm -hmm. Live Nation and and uh, Travis Scott and all those guys. But yeah. you know, um, you put on these things. Where do they cut first? They cut security, security. Safety, security. absolutely right. Security. That is absolutely right. It's just bottom line. They didn't have enough people, and they there. had fucking pe people penned in. Man, yeah. when you go to a festival like that, you're not supposed to be. You're not like fucking cattle surrounded into a thing where you can't leave. You're I, fucking in there. People leaving against the. They're just squashed in there. Mm -hmm. I was watching last night the documentary on uh, Tina Turner, and she's at a venue, and I want to say it was in Italy or France or someplace in Europe. One hundred thirty-six thousand people, Ooh. and it showed the crowd. Yeah, an enormous crowd, and they had to have everything, you know, in line. They had to have enough security. They had to have setup. And when they try to cut corners, they have a stampede there. No, they were already no, there. No, huh? no, they didn't have a stampede. But there. that guy, that guy, you know, if you look at if you look at um, 
you look at the, the history of a guy, of a performer where you could see issues where a guy came on the stage, he stopped the show, the guy was had a video. Don't get out of here, man. Somebody tried to steal his shoe on another thing in Italy, in Europe. He stopped the show. He said, motherfucker tried to steal my shoe. Beat his ass right there. Yes, I know. So he stopped the show when it was something about him. But, you know, that was, uh, man, there's some, there's some blood-curdling screams. And the music is so loud. And there's not anybody around that's really, you're not going to find you know, there's not a usher in the middle of there saying What's something as again? simple as it, what do you do if you're in the middle of that crowd and you got a shit? <sighs> well, I mean, you know, you, you can't. You, you, there's no place to go. Everybody's back then. You know, they had nothing prepared for anything. That's like pretty this. bad. The uh, the um, the lawsuits, I think, and then you know anybody will sue for anything now. Yeah. So if anybody like got billions of dollars, anybody got lawsuits. stepped on, you, you're sure. going to take an opportunity to file to sure. file a claim. There's people who have lost those lives, which I mean, I can't even imagine. You know, your your child goes to a concert and go, okay, have fun, but be careful. They come, they don't ever come back from a show, from a festival. You know, they've done. I may, I may file a lawsuit. I was thinking about going over there. <laughs> yeah. They would have just got on you. And then, you know, he sees the, the golf cart that's an ambulance, and he says, like, what the fuck is that? It's like he sees the red and blue lights, you know, in there. <laughs> yeah. And he's on stage, he's like, what the fuck is that? It's like a golf cart slash yeah. medic or whatever. But it's a, it's a bad... It is, and then what... Bad situation there. People crashing the gate, crashing the gates. It's, it's temporary fencing. Like, yeah. yeah. You know? They're not gates. They're temporary fencing. Uh, that's all it is. They... Uh, one of the performers, one of the big rap guys that was performing with him, Drake. Drake, after the show, is in the news where he's dropping million dollars with a million dollars at a strip club. A strip club. Doesn't make him uh, look good. No, Drake. it doesn't. And then Travis Scott and uh, Kylie Jenner went to Dave and Buster's and had an after party over there. So oh, you know, they did. but they they're allowed to go wherever they want. But uh, this is that's that's a serious, very serious situation with. Um, you know, the history of festivals and stuff like that, but no security and bad, and people penned in, and, you know, all that stuff is... They haven't had problems like that any, locally. We can't know. do anything fuck without anybody fucking dying. I, I think <sighs> no Coachella Shit. has been going for a few years now. They, they obviously have enough security over there. They haven't had the problems because they just get drunk they, and wild out I there. I think they, they learned a little bit from all the other places. I know the guy... One of the guys that created it, but you know they get free water out. You know when you get there, and they have big areas, but no one is penned in. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like you know, you can only get so many people in this room, but if we did it outside, you get you know they wouldn't you would, nobody'd be penned in. Yeah, so I think in, tra in trapping people into an area and people couldn't get out, that's the issue. Is nobody could get out sure. once you got in because you know you're surrounded by temporary fencing or whatever and, that and, is. But and, and nothing. Bad. Nothing personal intended, but who would think of taking their little child to that thing? Because one of the people that got killed was a little baby. Yeah, and that fourteen-year-old kid. But that guy Travis yeah. Scott, he he's in Fortnite. He's in the the gay. I don't play Fortnite, but he's in Fortnite. Yep. So he's got a lot of young fans, and then he's got the shoes, the Dior shoes, and he's got a deal with McDonald's. So he's trying to get a young audience. So like that that father said, you know, my son was a huge fan. He's nine years old, but he sees him in Fortnite, and you see him in all that stuff, but. I mean, going to a, a show on a nine-year-old. I mean, we we everybody's got to look at how would they put shows on, and and create safer places like secure. You know, they hired people to be security people of that. Nobody knows CPR. Nobody has a signal there. I mean, yeah. it's pretty dangerous. It's it's, it's it's cheap. Just gave them the yellow cheap. shirt. And you know, and, and people would go to places that I think are cheaper ticket, cheaper thing, but not not safe. So I think also as people. You have to figure out where you're going to go, what you're going to do, and what what are you willing to put up with uh, to do it? Like to go to go and see that guy, or to go s sit there. Everybody has a phone, and I think you know that's when I started looking at all the stuff on YouTube with that guy from Memphis, AK, oh yeah, AK47, this, this rapper there, that Southern man, crazy. You know they say the R R R. Yeah, like that dude. Like I've been I've been watching this guy. I'm trying to get him on the trying to get him on the podcast. Yeah. And I sent him a couple of messages on Instagram, and they're they're like, oh man, I can't believe that you know because you know that from the shows and all that stuff that they 
that that they know me. Yeah. And then I said, hey, man, come on the show, man. I said, oh, I would love to. Because I just think that as Southern as that dude is, his his mentality is, it's it's sim- you know, it doesn't have to be complicated to be right. Like, it's it's simple, but it's right. Mm-hmm. And you hear this guy talk, and you're like, first, when you get, you get past the way he speaks because he's Southern, but what he's saying is fucking, is really simple with rappers too like they almost said like hey if you're a rapper and you're wearing this all this and you're in a fucking camouflage lamborghini and you're going to this place to go buy cookies and you're wearing a fucking million dollars in jewelry you gotta you gotta have you gotta be safer than that because you're gonna go back to a place people are gonna resent you for going back and for helping people out you know, a guy got shot because his grand somebody bought robes for the choir, and then the grandmother said, "Oh, this dude bought robes for the choir," and the other guys are like, "Man, fuck that motherfucker!" And they fucking shot that dude because it's not about what it's about what he did. And it's like the grandmother said, "That that that man was so kind, he went and did this for us." And then that there, those guys are like, "Man, fuck that guy! He don't have to come in here and buy that shit." And they didn't do it. And then it's just. Man, the, the the value of life or the value of somebody fucking their life up for the rest of their life is just, I mean, like that. Sure. Fucking sure. gone forever. You know, you're yeah. gone forever. And a guy is like uh, with, a, with a banging stacks of $100 bills together. I only see taxes when I see motherfuckers with that <laughs> much cash. All I, I, I'm a, I, even somebody says, how much money do you think that is? All I see is fucking, the motherfucker should be paying taxes on that. It's half right there. So he'd be banging, if, if, he, if he paid taxes, he'd be banging he, just a few little things to like little stacks. <laughs> you got some ones. But they don't. And they're out there with that kind of lifestyle. Everybody wants to live, live that lifestyle. And an amateur rapper at a at a holiday festival last night had a fight with his girlfriend. He's in his car. He drove through a fucking parade and killed twelve people. Oh, is that what is happened? That, is that the guy with the red? Uh. That's another guy, amateur rapper, like amateur whatever. But everybody wants to be a thug. I mean, to get respect. You don't have to be a thug. Just be a law-abiding fucking citizen. He's just sitting in there in his car. This fucking parade's going on. He's all mad. He's like, man, fuck this. He goes through the fucking parade and kills people. It's crazy. And over there, but you know where I live, they have this festival of lights every year. Today, it starts on the 19th or whatever that, that I don't know the fuck day that is. And it, it takes four hours to get through it. So you have bumper-to-bumper fucking cars for a month until after New Year's in this one area by this park. If somebody starts shooting in there, you're bumper to bumper, where the fuck are they gonna go? Mm-hmm. Is that safe now? That's what I would think. Yeah. If, if a guy's in there and two guys start beefing and a guy takes a gun out and you're in there with your car looking at fucking lights in a park and the guy starts shooting, you're not going anywhere. So, you know, in my old age, mm-hmm. I, think well, I, people, I think people have to be more attentive of where they're going. First of all, remember that time I told you that that guy said to me, don't ever come back out of your garage. Always back in so when the garage door opens, you're coming out head first. That rapper over there in Memphis, he he had his Lamborghini parked head first into the store and there was a guy with him that was his security, both he and his security guard inside that cookie place were both looking down at their phones when the guy started shooting. So by the time they looked up, they were done. This is yeah, it's a young Dolph yeah, you're talking about. Dolph. Yeah, they're both in there looking at their phones, and by the time the shooting started, they had already got. I mean, Dolph, Dolph was the target. He had already gotten hit, and then his security guy ran out there and tried to shoot at those guys. He ended up getting arrested by the police, but his job wasn't to be looking down at his phone with Dolph. His job was to be at the door looking to see if anybody was going to come in. Excuse me, uh, j- it'll just be a couple minutes. Let my man come out. You guys can go back in there. I'll even buy you food and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. El Chapo in Mexico, when El Chapo would go into a, uh, a restaurant when he was on the loose, they'd go in there. His guys would go in there and go, everybody in here, let me have all your phones. Yeah. Everybody give me all your phones. Give me all electronics. They put them into a thing. He would go in there and have dinner. He would pay for everybody's dinner. He would leave, and they'd give everybody back their phones, and he would pay for their dinners because he didn't want anybody in there saying, "Guess who's in this restaurant?" Mm. And that's the way you know that's the way they were doing. But everybody's trying to be a mobster, trying to be a thug, trying to be rich, trying to show that you have something. And if you know a guy going to buy cookies is is thirty six years old, done. And gone. it's hard to convince yeah. young people that, that there's danger out there, you know, because they think it's it's nothing. You're if I was a young right? person. 
I would want somebody to fucking convince me that there's danger out there. So I'm not fucking 23 years old on a date with my girlfriend and some shit goes down and you look at her face and she's scared and you try to go over there instead of just saying to her, let's get the fuck out of here. Take your car, get the fuck out, do whatever you got to do to get out of there. Or see it coming and say, you know what, we're going to leave. How come? I, I don't like the way this shit feels. Trust me. Do, do it for, you know, I'm sorry. Well, I'll bring you back another time, but we're going to get the fuck out of here. Instead of being there when some shit goes down, because nothing goes down, nothing just happens. Like, there was a car at Young Dolph at the gas station. Somebody videotaped him. He didn't see it, and they're and they're out there, like they're 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 tagging that or or, or uh, you know following that guy around. That shit didn't just happen in a vacuum. They were fucking they were fucking guys driving around in a in a, in a camouflage Lam- Lamborghini in Memphis in, in the south, south of you know south part of Memphis. None of it's justifiable, but I wonder what it stemmed from because I I read somewhere or heard on the news. He had been shot like about four years ago. A shot out here at Lowe's Renaissance on Highland. Ah, see? He got oh, shot. Mm-hmm. So you get shot. Why would you go back? Could you give turkeys out to the, to, the, to, the, to the underprivileged in Memphis? Great. That's a beautiful thing. You don't necessarily have to go to that. Have, have a church do it have and don't do go it there. For you. Yeah. In your name. Now you don't have to go there to get, the, get that love. You're in some jeans with a million dollars worth of jewelry. Who's not going to be tempted to, to do that shit? Especially they see you on Instagram. Everybody's a thug. Everybody's got money and, and girls. No, oh, man. You, That's you, why I don't wear my Mr. T looking like that. There jewelry. you go. I know. I'll get you some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you. I'll get. I'll get a shot somewhere. Oh yeah, I want to see you come in with ice one day. All right, what else? <laughs> uh, we still got some time for voicemails. We still talking about panochas. Let's go. All right. Uh, Panocha. Yeah, cool. You guys hit on some good stuff too. That we actually have some relevant voicemails for, so uh, it'll all come together nicely. Pilot the co-pilot. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys ready? From the top. I wasn't born ready, but I learned later. Damn, got a mouth in my throat. What up, George and Gil? Uh, this question is for Gil. Just want to oh, know, man, then, after people. working with police and being a police officer so long, like, how do you stop yourself from being desensitized to uh, bad people? Like, how do you still see, want to see people live after they've overdosed or, you know, like, see people recover or rehabilitate their lives even though they've been a piece of shit for years and years and years and you've arrested them or whatever, like... I see a lot of police officers that say they show up and they'll let a dude overdose on heroin to let God decide instead of administering, administering Narcan and whatnot. Like, um, just how do you stay in a positive mindset and not become so sour in a profession that's nothing but negativity? Thank you. Can I say that's a pretty good question because, yeah. you know, uh, um, I remember I had a friend of mine that was a police officer and he had some pictures of crime scenes and he showed us and we were like, whoa, man, I mean, that's... And he was like, it wasn't a big deal. Like, you get used to it. But um, I don't think the thing is to get used to it, is it? No, you, you, number one, you don't show all that shit. Not to say that your friend was wrong, but uh, you don't show all that shit to everybody. That's that's not good. You know, that's like spreading the negativity. Myself, personally, I just don't... The way I've survived is you don't dwell on the on the negative. You look at the positive, you know, the the end result is you're able to tell some family member that we have the person responsible for the death of your loved one. You don't dwell on what you see. Everything is very scientific, uh, like a gynecologist looks at uh, yes private parts all day long, doesn't get excited, but let him go out on a date, and now he's a regular human being. That's the same way it is. We look at that. We don't see blood, guts, and gore. It's very scientific to us. And then... You just try not to dwell, and you try and forget about all the negative. You know, the kids that you had to see or the families you had to deal with, and you look forward to associating with good friends and having a good family for support. Without family and friends for support, you'd go nuts, and that, that's why I had to deal with it. You know, I think that in this country, in this world, that uh, you know, at a certain point when somebody is alone, uh, there's too many people in this country that are alone and lonely. And whether they're living um, with a lot of money, they're still alone, or living in trailers or living in apartments or the, or the elderly are alone and the end of their life is very sad, man. Like what to, is? to be alone and, and to be an elderly person is, is um, 
I mean, it's really sad to see. You know, you see them at restaurants, and there's where you see them places eating, or, or somebody, a guy, you know, that's alone, and all his friends have gone, or, or however. It, it's tough to see people like that. That that you live a long life, and there should be a reward for that long life, instead of the the reward or or the end being they find you after ten days, and you've been in your apartment, and you passed away ten days ago, and now you know somebody says, "Hey, I haven't seen that guy in ten days," and you know he's in there alone. Sad. That's sad, sad. ultimately sad. It, it is, and, and it is sad, and that's what led me. Uh, I told you about a restaurant that we f- used to frequent. What's the name of that place? Stevens. Uh, no, no, not not Steven. <laughs> this is Casa Alvarez, right there by my house. Oh. And there was a lady in there. My wife noticed, elderly lady, and she was by herself. She had big tetas. And no, no, they, they, they hung down to her knees. Oh. And and so my my wife just I always have she's to the one that she's the one that noticed and said, "Look at it, the poor lady's eating by herself." Why don't you pick up the tab? So we did. You know, I picked up her tab. I said, don't tell her after we're gone. So we left, and they explained to her. And next time I went in there, she had a drawing. They said, hey, we got a package for you. And it was something that she drew and gave it to us. And I said, well, I didn't want no, you know, we didn't do this again. But she drew it, and she signed it. So thank her very much. We see her in there again. And I said, hey, here. And I went over, and I talked to her, and I said, listen. I bought you, we bought you that because we just felt compelled to do so. You were here, wanted to have some company. Here, you don't have to paint anything, you don't have to do anything, you just, we wanted you to know that we cared. And I left. Come back, another painting. Fucking bitch. Eh? So now, <laughs> now, listen. now we have to, we, we won't go there at the same time. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> nice lady, but and I don't mind paying for her, but I just don't want any more of her drawings. <laughs> 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 So that's hilarious. <laughs> Fuck out of here. You serious? Yeah, I'm that's serious. That's hilarious. Uh, that, that, that so serious. there were two lobsters. That fucking crab is eating with her. <laughs> Before the crab dies, he's gonna get full. <laughs> so that, that's all we try and do. You, you remember there are people. Uh, I, I feel so fortunate. I'm blessed. I'm surrounded by good people. I have good people. So that far outweighs the negative. I used to make fun of old people when I was a kid. When I, was I young. still do. I had no oh, respect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then now I'm an old person myself. But but also I wish I had, I had somebody, an adult, to teach me things like respect for other people and things like that when I was a younger man. Because I think uh, you know I have a pretty good heart. I've helped a lot of people, and I think you don't you don't just become that person. But since I didn't have any really kind of adult supervision or anybody that I looked up to that you know I respected that uh, you know could mold me or guide me. Um, I was a little meaner than I should have been as a, as a kid to people. I worked with a guy. Even I had a big vertigo too, but I was always by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you a smelly one you know too. What? Oh, that motherfucker was awful. Man. <laughs> I worked with the nicest Mexican people in the world. People could smell it through my pants. That's when you know it's bad. <laughs> my, my, my brother was Frank Gonzalez with an S because he was not easy. He constantly reminded people of that. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, he was just the nicest man I'd ever met. We were partners for five years. I loved him like a brother. We did everything. If you saw Frick, Frack's right next to him. We were always together. Well, he went to a death in the jail, and the inmate died, and it, was a nat- it wasn't a murder. It was a natural cause of death. So he contacted the living relative, and it was his aunt. And she said, that's the only living relative I have. She was an older lady. She was crying. She was upset. He used to buy me my batteries, to buy this, he used to buy that. And he says, I'll take care of you. And so he was started going to visit her. And then he told me one time, he said, hey, partner, I need you to go down there with me. I said, all right. So we go down to visit this lady. She's in her 80s. And we go down to Did visit her. Did you make that No, okay. no, not at all. I have to ask. But I sit there and I go, I go there into her at apartment. At one time you think they were big? Yeah, I think they okay. were. And I go inside her house and it's an apartment but the air conditioner isn't working. It's leaking, oh. and it smelled. It was hot, and it smelled like urine. Not because she was urinating, just the stench from the w- wet water. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was terrible. We had to buy her ice cream. We bought her batteries for her hearing aid, and something else. So she was living like that, right? She was living and like to that. Her, to her, I mean, it's not the, the the kind of place that you would want a human being to be in. No. But it was just that's how that's where her situation was. And her only living relative who used to take care of her was now deceased. Yeah. So Frank said, I'll take care of you. And that's just the guy Frank Gonzalez was. Nicest guy in the world. So he takes me down there and we go in there 
and we're busy, and it's hotter than a well digger's ass in there. <laughs> Stinks to high heaven. And she says, oh, thank you for bringing your partner. I've been dying. I wanted to meet him so badly. And she's such a nice lady. And she says, well, I know you fellows probably have to get back to work. And I'm sitting there saying, yeah, you know, we got to get out of here. And Frank says, no, 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 we're not in a hurry. And inside, I'm sitting there saying, well, you chicken shit, why are you keeping me in here and this stuff? Yeah. So we finally get out of the place. And I said, Frank, you know she's telling everybody in the apartment complex that she's boning you. She's got this young Mexican buck that comes in there and takes <laughs> care of you, you know? And all I ever did was make fun of her and make fun of him. Yeah. And he's such a nice guy. He would take, he took his daughters to visit her. So wow. she would have a family to look in. So a couple of years later, now we're no longer partners. This is when I had transferred out before I came back. I said, partner, whatever happened to whatever her name was? And he says, she passed away. I said, oh, and I felt terrible. I said, partner, why didn't you tell me? He says, I couldn't tell you were Sue Coleman because all you ever did was make fun of me. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and I used to sit there and tell him, hey, I bet you she looked hot in some nylons, and, you know, hooked up with garter belts and everything. Yeah. For, crit, for Halloween, just stick her out in your front yard and put a witch's hat on her. It'll scare everybody. I used to make fun of him for it, but down deep inside, it, it was so beautiful, it brought tears to my eyes. But that's how we had to, to deal with it. And, and he's just a beautiful person, beautifully giving back to somebody. Nobody asked him for anything. Yeah. And he gave back. That's, that, and that's what, he, that's what he did. He's that, a beautiful man. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to do. My grandfather was doing that to this old lady that taking in her, her trash cans and stuff like that. And, you know, was he hitting it? Did he, she have big death? Yeah, she, she did. <laughs> <laughs> She used to call him Joe. His name wasn't Joe, but everybody was Joe. <laughs> she would say, hi, Joe. And my grandmother made fun of him for that. But, um, and now, you know, I don't go over there anymore. I mean, it's kind of where I grew up, but but we made fun of him for doing that. And it was unexpected to see a guy like that do that because he didn't really speak much good English and she was kind of old Italian. I mean, she had to come oh. from about it. And uh, she was alone. Or I think she had a son or something, but most of the time alone. And he went and helped her, I just, which is... Man, you know, a lot of people are, not, are leery of even helping people. You yeah, know? that's just, Frank, I've never met a man uh, nicer than him. He, he's, a, he's a great man. Yeah, I, I, you, know, I, you know, I went to El Paso with all that, all that stuff happened, you know, uh, with the shooting in, the, in, uh, in that Walmart. Oh, yeah. And I didn't do it for publicity, but the, and I hardly ever talk about it, but the thing that, um, the thing that, I mean, that kid drove from fucking Dallas to El Paso to shoot Mexicans. And he let other people who weren't Latinos run by him. And he never really went into the store uh, because he, he was doing everything from the front of the store. And uh, what made that guy stop shooting was the actual, the actual blood and what he was doing made him stop shooting. Nobody made him stop shooting. He stopped himself uh, because wow. of what he saw. And... Um, when I went there to go meet those people and talk to those people, not one of them was tatted out, neck, face tattoos, nothing. They were some people from Mexico that came three generations. And, you know, not that there's good people or bad people, but we judge people. But every one of those people that was in the hospital who was affected by this guy shooting, I would have been proud to call a family member myself. And not one of those people said, fuck that guy. Why us? Or how did this happen, George? Not one of them. And not any of the notes that were there in that half mile worth of flowers and notes and candles and everything said, like, you know, made anybody out to be a victim. Like, that guy created victims, but he didn't shoot victims. Those people were good, decent, mm -hmm. decent people. And um, I, you know, I, you know, and I went back the two-year thing, and I try not to be... You know, I think whatever people, for that particular time, you know, see you as you know, I come in the suit. That kind of, kind of the way I always am, and then you're you're kind of protecting your feelings, and you might get emotional. And then I spoke a little bit, didn't have anything prepared. I didn't, wasn't planning on speaking, but in my heart and in my soul, man, it's just fucking just it just hurts so much. Even today, that that element is out there, and that people target people by not by whether you know them and they decide to be good or bad people, but just simply by the way they look. And that's not just Latinos, just, you know, people rob old people, people follow other people, 
People want pe- something that somebody has that you don't want to work for. And, you know, in the society where there's filters and you can make yourself look way different than you are uh, naturally and people make, you know, th- millions of dollars as an influencer and you're just you're influencing people to live a life that doesn't exist is 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 wild in these days, man. Sure is. You know, and, and that what people find to be uh, of value and of, of worth, you know, uh, is uh, adulation or a like or whatever. You know, the, there's this family on YouTube called the Ace Family, and they're fucking shysters, man. They're fucking criminals and thieves, <laughs> and they pimp allegedly, and they pimp their family out, and they bought a $10 million fucking house. They were worth 20. Warren Buffett lives in a $650,000 house, and he has $115 billion. <laughs> You know, I've been around people who have billions of dollars and they're not anything like the people who are influent. The influencers want to live a bigger life than people who are fucking billionaires on paper, multi-billionaires on paper, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's just the wrong. I mean, if it's like this now, we'll be gone, I'm I'm sure. But where what what, what is it going to lead to, man? What's it going to lead to when when, you know, uh, uh, everything is. I saw a girl today walking down the fucking street or, or uh, a you person. Didn't, you looked, didn't know what street you were on today. I didn't know what street. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but there was a little Chinito dude, man, looking at his reflection, taking selfies of himself. He had like a little fucking palm tree. Motherfucker tried to make it look like he was in Hawaii. He had a fucking palm tree. He had a fucking palm leaf with him. And he's going like this on a sunny day. And you're like, hey, where you at, Hawaii? The motherfucker's over here in, in fucking Silmar. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Crazy. Anyway, so it, it, on YouTube, Mayan got me watching YouTube, where I think YouTube is more compelling. Also, the second season of Tiger King is is, is pretty good, too. Very oh, is that already out? I didn't yeah, even know. It's oh. pretty good. My son just started watching. He was telling me last It's night. pretty good. If you haven't seen Tiger King, you got to... You know, it's good to see white people matter, like that. Matter, matter of fact, they just announced... <laughs> I, I told him last night. Uh, I just heard it on the news or maybe on one of the trailers that they think they found her her husband in Costa Rica alive. No. That, okay, that that's a thing in the second one, but, it, you know, because everybody... You know, I'm telling you, spoiler alert, but everybody thought that she fed that dude to the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. dude had more shit going on. He he would have, I don't know if they thought that guy was a punk or whatever, but that guy had it going on. And he would have never allowed that woman, once you see what he was about, to, to, to take the upper hand on him. He disappeared because I don't think you could trust her and didn't want to be with her anymore. And she was one of those people like, let's be together forever. And that guy was like, I got more shit going on over here that I don't want you to know about. I'm gonna pretend I'm dead. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. So maybe they did Maybe they did yeah, find her. And Joe Exotic, that dude, you know, Joe Jotito right there in prison, oh, yeah. found some other guy to be in love with uh, from another state somewhere. So, you know, he thought <laughs> Trump was, I mean, he thought Trump was going to pardon him. And Thank Trump God. pardoned fucking rappers he didn't even know. And the <laughs> fact that, you know, it's almost like, you know, you can't pardon really kind of what somebody, was, I mean, I think Trump saw Joe Exotic and probably thought, I can't, I can't pardon him because they're going to, we're the same person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a few you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I think, but, but wild, man, you know, wild, wild about the. Fucking, you know, you know, when you see carnival ride operators, and you know that they're at one church here. That's what it reminds me of. It. At, yeah. And that's a what carny. it is. They're they're at a ch- they're at they're at uh, a circus here in the valley. Next week they're all on the other side in Southgate. Next week they're in San Diego, and they go around the United States doing you know circuses. And those are those people, yeah. the guys that operate the rides. <laughs> that's the old carny. All right, who else? Well, well, hot damn, uh, we got time for one more. So, so let's, let's do, do it. One more. I didn't think I was going to talk that much today, but, uh, you know, I did. You're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. I'm, I'm, you got to get in entertainment. I'm awesome. I'll get hair on it. And, 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 uh, <laughs> one balloon left of it. <laughs> All right. And actually along those lines. Hey, George. Just watching episode 36 right now. 36? We haven't fucking done just realized either. you've uh, never talked about where you learned how to act. I know you're in a TV show. I bet again. Hilarious. <laughs> but never, never knew where you... Learn how to act from. I know you're in life. started as a comedian, and I just want to know where did that transition come from, comedian to actor? I'm- Is that a good question? Um. Well, I mean, you know, we just did that, and we just finished the Amazon thing, where um, 
was more dramatic, like the Amazon, the the uh, Once Upon a Time in Atslan, where <clears throat> I'm the father, grand, father, grandfather. But I think that in an, to answer that guy's question, you know, I said that, uh, you know, people complain about the lack of um, Latinos in Hollywood. Uh, my show has almost been on for 20 years. I don't, you don't hear me bitching about that, you know. But I think if you want to be good at anything, it doesn't matter what fucking color you are. You have to be prepared to to be good at something, and and nobody's going to come and ask you to do something. Uh, and if they do, say, hey, you ever thought about being in the show? Uh, no. And then you can't act and they go away. Whatever you want to do or whatever you inspire to do, you have to make sure that you can get yourself to be decent enough to where if somebody asked you to act, it's not unfamiliar to you. So, you know, once I realized way back 20 years ago that, that I was going to have an issue, almost 20 years ago next month, an issue with, with acting because nobody ever asked me if I could act and I was too busy preparing the show. But once I realized that, uh, when I read the script with another actor that I was probably the weakest link that I decided to go get an acting coach. So, you know, now with YouTube and all that stuff, somebody could take acting classes or guitar classes or learn how to cook and learn how to play guitar or learn how to build a fence or tune up your car or fix your transmission all on YouTube. Sure. You don't have to hire a coach anymore. It's all there. But back then, I would look at movies of people that I liked the way they act and I would, I would try to see where... They were acting, and if you know some of the the best actors, you can't you can't see them acting. Yeah. You don't catch them acting, and I think that. So if anybody wants to do whatever, I would say you know you, you, it's not going to come to you, and nobody's ever really kind of born with that much talent. So you have to prepare for that. And then you know Muhammad Ali is funny. Muhammad Ali has that Ken Burns thing on PBS. It's like four. Um, Multi, it's like probably a twelve-hour thing, mm-hmm. and you know I always like Muhammad Ali growing up, and you know I remember you know back then my grandmother fucking hated Muhammad Ali, and then when he was fighting Joe Frazier in the seventies, that we would go to sleep because it was like you know they were fighting. If it was nine here, it was midnight over there. They were probably still fighting, and you would run down and get the newspaper in the morning, open it up, and try to see you know who won back then. And uh, uh, I actually always admired him, but I mean when you see his life with things that you'd never seen before in his life. Very emotional, man. It's very emotional to me uh, uh, to see him and the things that he went through because I always admired him, but i never seen a lot of those things. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I found myself... I didn't like him. I was always waiting for somebody to beat his ass. That's all I wanted, somebody to beat his ass. <laughs> Only because he was a draft dodger. He was a talker yep. and he was a draft dodger. He mm-hmm. didn't want to do this, didn't want... And it wasn't until later on that I learned to appreciate him. And he was a good man. Very special man. And yeah, he was a very special, special man and, and had a brilliant, uh, he had a good sense of humor. Everything was going for him, and uh, I became a fan. It was tough to see him get. He Big fought man. He fought too long. He fought too long. Mm-hmm. And his brother, uh, Rudy, his name was Rudy. They named him after Rudy Valentino. And his brother has, I think he still lives, he may still be living, and he, and he lived in... Uh, in Louisville, and he had Parkinson's as well, and he he was a fighter, but you know you didn't hear about him as much as you, I mean, clearly his brother sure. Muhammad Ali, but yeah, and then Howard Bingham, who was uh, Muhammad Ali's photographer, I met in the mid '80s, and then Muhammad Ali was the uh, Grand Marshal of the uh, L.A. Um, the marathon, and he invited me to go meet Ali one morning early, and I didn't go uh, because. No, you know, and Howard Bingham called me at fucking like 5.30 in the morning. He goes, just checking, man, you coming? And I said, man, I don't think I'm gonna make it, man. And I, from San Fernando, I could've gone to Coliseum. I was gonna come, go by myself at that time. I was probably about 24, or 25. But, you know, there I, you know, I've met so many people, but I think I would've, I, I think I would've. Don't quote me on this, but I'd be willing to bet a month's pay. Muhammad, they've got a picture of Muhammad in Big Jim. Steven Steakhouse. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he he went a, there, too? Mohammed was there. Bring it home, Gail. Bring it home. And, and, and Frank Sinatra, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Damn, what is that place? It's there. It's gold, brother. I'm telling you. Right, we're going. That's where we're having the anniversary of, of the Oh My God Hot podcast. You're just yeah. going to tell me. Give me a date. We'll get some want. fucking tetonas there, please. Yeah, oh, fine. yeah. There you go. And a then, couple do the big it'll, it'll, it'll be March next year's one year. We'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll, we'll get the place. He's ready to do it. Whatever you want, it's there. And we'll get the, the broads to put on the, the, the what are they, the halter, the tube tops? <laughs> tube tops nice. and spandex. Tube tops were nice. <laughs> tube tops and spandex for the night. Let's go. There we go. All right, we'll keep uh, leaving voicemails, 818-533-1843. And uh, see you guys next week, right? Yep. Sounds good to me.